Do you know what programming thinking skills are? And what about problem solving skills? Let me give you a demonstration using the most well-known Hello World program. This is the example to write Hello World using JavaScript or using Python, even using PHP or Swift or Dart or the basic C language. But do you think it's too simple or too easy to print Hello World to the screen? So it may be too easy for us to use a programming language to print Hello World to the screen, but for the CPU, it's a very difficult task because to print Hello World to the screen, even just to print the character H is a very difficult task for the CPU. But why? We all know the computers only know the binary language 0 and 1. But why does a computer only understand 0 and 1 as binary language? So let me try to explain it to you. Because in computers, it is very easy for a processor to consider 0 voltage as 0 and non-zero voltage as one. So in this example, you can see that we are using zero voltage for zero, three voltage for one, so zero voltage is zero, and any non-zero voltage is one. Theoretically, we can also use the concept like zero voltage for zero, 1.5 voltage for one, and three voltage for two. But while considering the structure and the architecture of the processor, we emphasize two things. Number one is cost, because to consider zero voltage for zero, 1.5 voltage for 1 and 3 voltage for 2, a much more complex circuit is required, which further increases the cost. We also emphasize stability and error prevention, because assigning 0 voltage for 0, 1.5 voltage for 1, and 3 voltage for 2 makes the CPU more susceptible to errors, which in turn could lead to additional costs. So it is always the best to make things simple and easy. That is why computers are designed to understand only the binary code zero and one. So now to print hello world, text is printed character by character, just like H E L L O. And then the space is also considered a character and then W O R L D and the exclamation mark. So to print a single character, characters have to be converted into binary code because computers can only understand binary code. So this is the ASCII table. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. As computers can only understand numbers, an ASCII code is the numerical representation of a character in the CPU. As we can see here, the character H is at the decimal number 72. So the decimal number 72 is a numerical representation of the character H. We also have something called a hexadecimal value of H. But as ASCII is originally developed and invented by Americans for the English language only, that's why we need UTF-8, UTF-16 Unicode schemes to support non-English characters too, since this basic ASCII table here only supports English characters. Now let's use a calculator to convert decimal 72 or the letter H in binary and hexadecimals. You can find a similar calculator on your computer or mobile phone. By using the calculator in programming mode just like this, you can convert any decimal value into binary, hexadecimals, and vice versa. So the decimal representation of the character H is 72, and the binary representation is this. We use the binary representation of characters as 8 bits, or 1 byte for a singular character. As you can see here, there are a total of 8 bits, which is equivalent to 1 byte. The hex code for the character H or the decimal number 72 is 48. Hexadecimal numbers are easy to represent binary numbers and easier to read. We will introduce this later on. Now we know we can convert any decimal number into hexadecimals and binary using an inbuilt calculator in your computer or mobile phone. So now we know the hexadecimal value of H is 48 and we're using the prefix 0x to show that it is a hex number. The top number is a hexadecimal, and the binary value of the letter H is 0100100. Now on the right hand side, you can see this. This is a seven segment LED from numbers one to seven. So to represent the letter H, 
we must give signals to the LED numbers 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6 to glow so that it will represent the letter H. There are two ways in which we can send the binary number H to this seven-segment LED. We can either use serial data transmission in which we send the bits one by one as 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, or you can use a parallel data transmission in which all the bits are sent in one go. So, as you can see here, this is a universal serial bus, or a USB cable. It's for serial communication. And this is an old printer cable. It's used for parallel communication. You can see the cost is higher for a parallel communication cable, as more wires are needed, compared to a serial communication cable. But in the case of serial communication, more coding and programming is required, as we need to consider which binary numbers are for which LEDs. But it's not a problem because as a full stack developer, we can do anything. Our code can be used by a million users and save millions of dollars compared to the high cost parallel cables. So now let's try to print Hello World to the screen using C language. And we're going to execute all this code on junioritai's playground. So let's open your web browser. Then visit junioritai and click on the playground. Again, come to practice any language and click on C slash C++. Now, this is the code to print Hello World to the screen in C. So let's try to run it. As you can see, the code is running perfectly. But if we remove the topmost line of the code and try to run it again, it's telling us that there's some sort of error. But why? Because in the first place, the printf function is not a part of the original C language we must include the standard IO header file at the top of the file first. Then we are able to use the printf function. So now if we run this again, the code runs normally. Now let's check how CPU prints Hello World. Let's again go to junioritai's playground. I'm gonna copy this C Hello World code and use the language translation feature from AI. I'll delete all this code and paste the C code here. In the comment, I'm going to write C language here to help AI understand the code. Now I want this code to translate into assembly language and click on ask now. So assembly language contains the instructions that are executed by the CPU. The assembly language is not easy to read, but AI has added comments for us. It might still look a bit daunting to you. So let me try to explain all of this using some simple examples. Now in this program, initially the CPU will load hello world to the memory and end the string with a backward slash zero so that the computer can recognize that it is the end of the string. Then afterwards, the CPU loads the address of the hello world string as well as the size of the string from the memory to the CPU's registers. And then the CPU makes a system call to Linux kernel's write function to print the string in the default output device. So let's try to learn all these things step by step. First, let's learn what memory and CPU registers are. Now you can consider computer memory as a book with a lot of numbers, but our brain can't do the calculations to use these numbers from the book directly. We must send the numbers to our brain's neurons or brain cells. Only then can we use these numbers to do calculations. Similarly, all our program's data are saved in the computer's memory. So now, just like the CPU is the brain of the computer, inside the brain, the CPU has registers, which are the CPU's memory, or the neurons or cells in our brain. The CPU loads the string address with the string size from the memory to the CPU register, then makes a system call to kernel API to print the string, hello world. So now what is Linux kernel and system call? So the web browsers, file explorer, terminal console, and even the desktop UI itself are all just user-level software. Even Android and Ubuntu Linux operating systems use the same Linux system, which we call as the core of Linux or Linux kernel. So kernel is essentially the intermediary between hardware and software, serving as an interface that transforms hardware into software. This enables user-level software such as web browsers, file explorers, and even the desktop UI itself to interact with and utilize the hardware. All software access to the hardware comes through the interface of Linux kernel, which we call the system call. Even the CPU itself will use the Linux kernel system call to control the other hardware. 
Just like third-party libraries and packages, we can develop third-party Linux kernel modules to let kernel support new hardware that is not natively supported. The purpose of the Linux kernel is similar to that of high-level software frameworks like React, Flutter, Django, OpenCV, FFmpeg, and TensorFlow, etc. These frameworks encapsulate fundamental coding languages and technologies, simplifying the development process for programmers. Developers can build upon these frameworks, avoiding the need to start from scratch or delve into the details of underlying technologies. The problem is, in university, we learn how to design computer hardware from scratch and how to write an operating system, and even learn how to invent a new coding language. But we don't learn how to program based on Linux kernel's system call or how to use these popular software frameworks for development. But this is almost all you are required to do as a developer in a company. Now let's use Google to search Linux write system call, which is used by the CPU to print the string hello world. When we search the keyword Linux write in Google, Google will show the Linux manual page for the write system call in the top of the search results. That means this page has a high rank in Google's system, so it is a very important page. Once we open this page, we will find all the details about the Linux write system call. We can also use shell command or terminal console to check the Linux programmer's manual for the write system call. Let's try this command, man to write and hit the enter key. You will get the Linux programmer's manual that contains all the information about the write system call. Now let's learn more about the write system call. First, let's write a hello world program in C and execute the program. But as a beginner, we're going to use the junioritai assistant. Let's write some text here. How to write hello world program in C and execute the program. Then click ask now. It shows us we have to create a file and copy paste this code into the file. Let's again create a new file and I'm going to name it hello.c and I'm going to copy paste the code as suggested by AI. Now again, check AI's response. So let's copy this and paste it here. So this command will compile the C program. As you can see, this is a result of the compilation of the C file. Now to run this code, we must use this command. Now that we can see this, we are able to print hello world to the screen. To learn more about the write system call, let's learn one more command, strace. Now, as you can see, this write one hello world here is a system call write. The one means to write this text to the standard system output device, which in this case is the console window. Now you can even use the AI to learn more about the strace shell command. So let's again use the AI assistant, explain to me the strace Linux command, and the AI will explain all about this command to you. As you can see, you're now an expert, even though all you know is how to write hello world. Using programming thinking and problem solving skills is crucial. These skills not only help you code like a professional, but also assist you in approaching other tasks with expertise.